गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स इट गिवस मी एम एस प्लेजर टू बी हियर अगेन फॉर माई कोर्स एयरक्राफ्ट सिस्टम दिस एयरक्राफ्ट सिस्टम कोर्स बिलोंग्स टू द सिक्स सेमेस्टर एरोनॉटिकल स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एरोनॉटिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एरोनॉटिकल इंजीनियरिंग हैदराबाद टूडेज टॉपिक इज ए case study on aircraft oxygen and anti icing system so i will be discussing about this uh, uh, about oxygen system and why it is required and in cold weather condition uh, ice is formed on the wing on the cockpit on the canopy on the engine cowlings and all the other places how to prevent and how these things are affecting the aircraft performance so we have to some method that icing should not form or ice on the aircraft should not form we know that once the aircraft is flying at high altitude the density of the air and the presence of the oxygen is tremendously reduced this reduction of the air quantity makes a discomfort to the passengers pilots and all other crews so we should have some arrangement so that or it should produce itself in in aircraft or we should carry the oxygen cylinders inside the aircraft and these oxygen cylinders can be used for the emergency purpose i think those who have flown the aircraft you might have seen that the air hostesses are explaining about emergency lowering of oxygen mask and these oxygen masks are used as and when there is some problem in the aircraft and your aircraft is not able to supply a proper amount of oxygen for general purpose use so this oxygen is used for that purpose and also anti icing in cold weather especially in europe and russia and especially in canada where very high uh, in minus degree temperature goes and there a huge amount of ice is formed on the aircraft wings fuselage uh, all the control surfaces there we want that it should be removed so if it is flying with that ice uh, the performance of the aircraft will be reduced the weight of the aircraft will be increased and in this way the uh, aircraft uh, flying uh, landing and take off all things will be disturbed so to avoid we should use some anti icing measurements so that ice should not form and if it is form also then we have to remove it and aircraft should not carry uh, icing at all on board the aircraft as you know that i am dr vy dithivedi professor from institute of aeronautical engineering department of aeronautical engineering hyderabad india in today's topic i am going to cover the following topics and these topics are mapped with the course outcomes this belongs to the module 2 and here course outcomes 2 are matched for each and every topic so here we have oxygen system one introduction is there types of oxygen systems it is also co2 components of the oxygen system this is also the co2 deicing and anti icing system co2 types of this systems also co2 and how these things are operated this is also part of the co2 now aircraft oxygen system the human body is dependent on oxygen as the altitude increases the consequent decreases in the pressure reduces the amount of oxygen the human body can absorb when breathing so we need oxygen because if human body need a sufficient amount of oxygen and if the oxygen is reduced after some times your breathing will be difficult your there will be lack of oxygen in your blood our brain want a sufficient amount of oxygen 
if oxygen is not work, uh, getting sufficient, the functioning of the brain will also affect it and all your parts will also be affected. Energy level of your body will be reduced. To enable flight at high altitude, either the aircraft cabin has to be precised to replicate the pressure at a lower altitude or the occupants of the aircraft have to be given supplemented oxygen. So there we can have two method. One is the cabin pressurization, cabin pressurization with oxygen level and second is another type in which supplemented oxygen O2 is given to passengers and air crews. So this we have to understand and this we have to see that these things are done properly. At the cruising level commonly flown by commercial air transport aircraft, loss of pressurization can quickly lead to incapacitation. So at the cruising level, or when the aircraft has got particular height, you see what is the cruising? So I can, I can show you some, this is the, on the ground, it is on the runway, then it is climb, then after reaching here, it is cruise. So most of the time, aircraft goes in the cruise. So, and the, at the cruise, the aircraft has got a sufficient height. So in that height, at the cruising level, commonly flown by the commercial aircraft, this is a commercial Indian Airlines aircraft, uh, Airbus. So, loss of pressurization. So, as you go high altitude, there is a less pressure outside and inside you will get the less amount of oxygen lead to incapacitation. The higher the altitude, the lower of the time of useful consciousness. So, as you go high altitude, your consciousness or the your brain working will be reduced and you may get some brain problem or some unconscious, you can become the unconscious. To, to avoid that, we should have some oxygen inside the aircraft, some system should be there which should produce the oxygen so that the people can breathe it sufficiently. Types of oxygen system in aircraft. So these oxygen systems can be divided into the two groups. One is the continuous flow system, another is the demand flow system. Mostly we have flown on the passenger aircraft and it is a continuous flow type. Means it is already flowing. You are sitting there, all are sitting there enjoying, there is no problem. But sometimes you may see on top of your, there is a oxygen mask. In case you feel that your oxygen is not sufficient, then you have to press it, it will fall down or Whenever the level of oxygen or the precision level on the cabin or on the fuselage is reduced, it will automatically fall down. The mask will fall down and you have to hold your mask here like this. I will show you the figure also and that is called demand flow system. So I am going to discuss one by one. First one is the continuous flow system. So in continuous flow oxygen system allows oxygen to exit the storage tank through a valve and passes it through a regulator reducer attached to the top of the tank. The flow of high pressure oxygen passes through a section of the regulator that reduces the pressure of the oxygen which is then fed into the hose attached to the mask worn by the user. Once the valve is opened, the flow of the oxygen is continuous. Even when the user is ex exhaling or when the mask is closed on some system, fine adjustment to the flow can be made with an adjustable flow indicator that is installed in the hose in the line to the mask. So this type of continuous, it will uh, always give you the oxygen and it is in the open circuit, all will get the oxygen. So here is a typical continuous flow oxygen system. This is the diagram. 
which is taken from the reference one. So here this we can see from here on the ground we can charge it. There are some charging trucks. So this charging truck will come and they will connect their hose here and by the high pressure it will enter. From here we have the charging valve. This is a shut off valve. If you want to put in you make it on and if you want, don't want you can make off. In this time it is showing as a off. Okay, so if you want to make then you have to make like this. You have to turn like this. Then we have to send it to the filter. In the filter it will be filtered. Then it will go to the check wall. Check wall will allow the one side direction. It is also called the non-return wall. It will not allow the flow to this direction. Only it will be in this direction. It will not allow in this direction. So here is a check wall. Then we have again a shut off wall. This shut off wall is whether you want from this in inside one cylinder is there. From there you want or you want from here. So it will go from charging, it will also charge this bottle also, it will be ch ch charged. After charging, you can make on and off this, here is also off. So if you want to on, it will go directly in this. Again, we have the filter, all the uh, unnecessary contaminant, your oxygen should be pure, no dust, no other particles should be there. This all particle has to be extracted in this filter. From here, it goes to the pressure gauge. In this pressure gauge, the pressure is measured. Then it will go to the pressure reducer. Here the pressure will be reduced because here you, you may have 3000 psi, but I need a very less pressure. So this will be reduced here. From here it will go to the pressure relief valve. So if the pressure is high, the pressure will be relieved from here and then green blown out uh, disc here. Then it, it goes to the again for a pressure regulator. From here, pressure will be regulated as per the requirement. Then it will go from here to here. Then it will go for different mask, mask outlet and calibrated orifice. So here is one special equipment. It is called the calibrated orifice. This is calibrated in such a way that the required amount of oxygen will be going to the occupants of the aircraft. And in this way, here is your passengers are here. Here all they will pilot and other people are here. Pilot, passengers, air crews. Oh, they will take this oxygen and this is the way and this mask will come out as and when the pressure in the cabin is reduced. So that is the specialty of this type of oxygen system. Now I will talk about the next system which is called the demand flow system. In this as and when I want, you have to select it and your oxygen will come to the system. So when oxygen is delivered only as the user inhale or on demand, it is known as a demand flow system. So as and when you see that in the Airbus or the Boeing there are 200 passengers. Out of 200, one or two may feel that they are having less oxygen and they are feeling some suffocation or some uh, omitting or some other activities. That time, a particular people can use that mask. He or she can put this mask in his mouth or her mouth and as she or he is breathing, that much amount of oxygen, it will be required. So when Oxygen is delivered only as the user inhales or on demand. It is known as a demand flow system. During the hold and exhalation period of breathing, the oxygen supply is stopped. Thus, the duration of the oxygen supply is prolonged as none is wasted. Demand flow systems are used most frequently by the crew on high performance and air transport category aircraft. So fighter aircrafts are uh, high performance. If you see, the it is uh, ma uh, it is with the helmet. The mask is here and one pipe is here. So always it is 
fixed with them. So it is always, and it is the benefit of this thing is as in when they inhale, oxygen will come. As you exhale, oxygen will not come. So you can save a lot of oxygen by doing such type of things. Here it is shown one demand flow oxygen system. In this you can see that here is the mass storage box with mass regulator. This is the captain of the aircraft, main pilot. Then here is the first officer station, the right side, right side and the left side is your captain and the right side is your first officer. Here mass is stored. System shut off wall is there. This wall can be opened and the closed by the pilots. Then mask regulator is here. For the captain, it is here. For the first pilot, it is here. It is a mask regulator. First observer's station. Crew oxygen cylinder located in the forward cargo component. So these things are a typical demand systems is shown. And mostly these are used for the long range transport aircraft for the pilot especially for air crews these things are used and observers are also in military aircraft if you have the cargo aircraft a big military aircraft also from going from one place to another place there will be two pilots so one observer one flight engineer one flight gunner and some five to six people will be on board so all should have this type of system they will have the mask on their uh, nearby and as and when they want they can put it and they can fly the aircraft. Oh, why, where and how? This is the another question. Why we need this oxygen and where we will get and how we will find out. So this I am going to discuss this. I am going to explain about this three requirement. Why? The first question. Then where I will get this oxygen and how I will make it oxygen to available for all of the passengers. The human body is dependent on oxygen. As the altitude increases, the consequent decrease in pressure reduces the amount of oxygen the human body can absorb when breathing. To enable flight at a high altitude, either the aircraft cabin has to be pressurized to replicate the pressure at a lower altitude or the occupants of the aircraft have to be given supplemented oxygen. This system is known as an oxygen system. So if we are giving the oxy additional oxygen by the own system which may be inside the aircraft that is known as the oxygen system. Oxygen systems are designed to store or to generate a supply of pure oxygen and to regulate, dilute as required and then distribute that oxygen to crew or the passenger. They are installed in many military aircraft and in most commercial and the business aircraft. Depending upon the type and the role of the aircraft concerned, the oxygen systems may be used for normal operation to provide supplemented oxygen for a specific situation or for provision of emergency oxygen in the event of smoke, fire, fumes or loss of pressurization. So, Next, we will see here that by the help of this figure that how the oxygen will affect. So higher the altitude, lower the outside pressure, making it difficult to breathe. Cabin acts as a pressure vessel, pressurized by the air conditioning system to make breathing comfortable. You see that if you are at the 24,000 feet, the ambient pressure is 5.70. And if you are at 40,000 feet, the ambient pressure is 2.72. At the sea level, we have 14.7 psi. So this is the correct pressure which we want. But as and when you go up and up, the atmospheric pressure is reduced. So this you can see that uh, here 10.92 psi to so 2.72 psi. So here we need uh, 8.20 more. So cabin altitude 8000 feet means 10.92 psi. So we should minimum pressure uh, we need 10.92 psi and it is equivalent to 8000 feet of 
aircraft height aircraft altitude okay so this we have to make sure that in our aircraft at no case the 10.92 psi should be there so here we will have 2.72 but we need 10.97 so there is a shortage of 8.20 psi if you are at the 24,000 feet here is 5.70 so 10.72 minus 5 you need 5.22 psi we need at 24,000 but if you go at 40,000 we need 8.2 extra we need this much we have to add it so as you go up and up your pressure has to be increased and, and this pressure increase is done by the cabin pressurization. Now O2 system regulator, the, how the oxygen system regulators are working and how this can be uh, seen here that the aircraft oxygen regulator control the pressure and flow of the oxygen in aerospace life support system. So these are the regulator, it is, it is shown here and they are very important component of any oxygen system. The aircraft oxygen regulator which is controlling the pressure and the flow, how much amount of oxygen required and what pressure. Just now before I told you, in this this much 8.20 additional pressure is required, in this 5.22 is required, this much pressure to be added so that you can get minimum 10.72 psi is required to get it. So systems are often characterized by the types of regulator used to dispense the oxygen that is called continuous flow and the demand flow just now I have discussed. So these regulators are also depend upon the which type of systems you are using the regulator whether you are using in the continuous flow or you are using in the demand flow system. In some aircraft a continuous flow oxygen system is installed for both passenger and air crew. So this you can see that most of the time a continuous system, especially for passenger bigger aircraft, you have the continuous system and the continuous system is used for the pilot also, for the passenger also, the same system is used. The passenger demand system is widely used as a crew system, especially on the larger transport aircraft. Many aircrafts have a combination of both systems that may be augmented by portable equipments. So we have seen uh, in Airbus and the Boeing that both systems are available. In case of emergency, you can use the demand type of systems, uh, demand flow systems and this continuous is always working for all the people. Here this you can see one the regulator is here. So here oxygen regulator, here is the pressure demand, but this is the flow here. Here you have the one lamp is here, here the pressure gauge is here, here emergency pressure control lever is here. So in this you can see that emergency operation, manual operation and here is the test mask is here. Then upper size is 100 and here is the zero. So accordingly this you can see and here is the supply on and off. So if you want to make on, you have to press this switch here. If you want to mark off, you can make it here. So like this one uh, diluter controls here, we can uh, how much dilution of the, your oxygen you want. That you can select as per the requirement. Further, I am going here that portable oxygen system here. So the portable gaseous oxygen system is used when Flight altitude requires the use of oxygen and the aircraft is not equipped with an oxygen system. So these portables are required if aircraft is not equipped. Few aircraft their oxygen system is not there. In that type of situation, we have to carry this type of oxygen cylinder. This system is used for passengers or crew members when the aircraft oxygen system services only the pilot and the co-pilot or it is used when the duties of the crew requires them to move about the aircraft. So sometimes we have to send the uh, our flight engineer or some people from one place to the another place inside the aircraft. So th that time they will put this mask with this cylinder and they will breathe accordingly. A portable unit weighs approximately 20 pounds and typically 
consists of lightweight steel oxygen cylinder, usually 1800 psi capacity. How oh, are Associated plumbing combined flow control, reducing valve, pressure gauge, and breathing mask and connecting hose. These all items. Plumbing is pipeline, flow control devices, pressure gauges, breathing mask, and the connecting hoses. These hoses to be carried by each and every person who is going the aircraft where a continuous flow system is not available. They have to carry this type of system. Now the next one is the onboard oxygen generation system. So here it is shown here this oxygen and this you can see the color and all the oxygen systems the cylinders are painted in this type of color. So onboard oxygen generating system it is called OBOX. OBOX. Onboard oxygen generating system OBOX centric life support system is system to provide enhanced physiology protection to air crew of high altitude and high speed fighter aircrafts. OBOX replaces liquid oxygen uh, system by utilizing bleed air from the aircraft engine and separating its component using molecular sieve, geolite, pressure swing absorption technology. So this OBOX replaces a liquid oxygen uh, system LOX by utilizing bleed air from the aircraft engine and separating its components using molecular sieve pressure swing absorption technology. The system consists of two molecular sieve beds with oxygen plenum to provide breathing gas to air crew continuously. Component consists of a heat exchanger, concentration, regulator and associated plumbing. So in this we have the heat exchangers so that your uh, temperature of the oxygen should not increase. We should also have the concentrator. We can increase or the, decrease the level of the oxygen as per the requirement and associated pipelines should be there. This is shown here the diagram here. If you can see here this uh, cylinders are here oxygen 1 and 2 and th th they are piped nicely and here is the inlet and there is an outlet. So in this way it is working. Now if you see here the liquid oxygen system most, most of the time if you see our the household gas cylinder is also not a gas inside. We make it as a liquid. So more amount of gas can be stored as a liquid form. In aircraft also we have the gas cylinder, this oxygen cylinder like this, dome type of spherical shape and all oxygen equipments are painted with green color that you have to always understand. So a green color indicates that it is an oxygen system. So this system is used in modern jet aircraft because liquid oxygen can be stored in containers which occupy less space and weigh less than those used for gaseous oxygen. So if you make it as a liquid, the space requirement is reduced, the size of the container is reduced. So we need a very high pressure cylinders so that we can store the gases there. In general, the use of liquid oxygen system instead of the standard gaseous oxygen system makes possible a weight reduction of 65 percent. A very important, so if you make the liquid 65 percent of the weight of the your system is reduced and space reduction for the 85 percent of the space reduction is reduced. That is the advantage of the making the liquid oxygen. So a, a, a tremendous amount of space is saved because in aircraft space is very important parameter because you have to accommodate some other thing. If you only your oxygen system is everywhere and uh, it is not good. So it is makes the 65 percent of the weight reduction and 85 percent of the space reduction can be done by using the liquefied gas systems. 
the space and the weight reductions are possible because of the fact that a given volume of liquid oxygen under moderate pressure can be converted to over 800 volumes of oxygen gas suitable for breathing. This fact enables large quantity of breathing oxygen to be stored in liquid from in containers designed to withstand only moderate internal pressure as opposed to a great number of containers holding gas at a moderate pr pressure or a few extremely heavy containers holding gas at a high pressure. So somewhere we have to make a high pressure and somewhere we have to make a moderate pressure. Means high pressure means 3000 psi and above and moderate means 1000 to 1500 psi if you are making it is called the moderate pressure. Liquid oxygen system typically consists of a liquid oxygen converter, check valve and manifold, oxygen heat exchanger, oxygen vent airflow control panel, liquid quantity indicator and breathing mask which I have shown you earlier. If you see here, this is the oxygen system. So these things are required here for this purpose. So to make this LOX, we need LOX converter, we need the, some check valve, we need some manifold, we need some oxygen heat exchangers, oxygen vent airflow control panel, liquid quantity indicator and breathing mask with connecting hoses. These are the items required. So what are the precautions we have to take while handling the oxygen system? You know like a lot of accidents are happening because the people who are operating or maintaining the aviation oxygen systems are not following the correct precaution so that there may be some fire chance, there may be some uh, explosion of the cylinders. These things I have seen many times explosion is taking place because you have not done properly the uh, regulators or the relief valve you have not set in a proper pressure. So now what are the precautions uh, each and everyone has to be taken? So this we all have to remember and we have to use in practice not only the remembering in our real life we have to practice this all uh, these all things. So keep the equipment clean. So every oxygen equipment should be clean. There should not be any petroleum grease nearby the oxygen cylinder otherwise sometimes the fire may take place. Protect the oxygen mask from direct sunlight and dust because the mask are the rubberized product and if they are exposed to the sunlight it will deteriorate and also if it is not put in a proper place and proper covered dust will be entering inside the mask and this dust will go inside the human being and human being will get infected by that. Store in a proper container. So this all oxygen masks should be stored in a very clean environment. Proper inspections are important. So your oxygen equipment should be inspected regularly at an authorized FAA inspection station. No smoking, oxygen is highly inflammable. This board has to be has to be placed near the O2 system. Okay, so we have to prepare a board with a no smoking and near wherever you are working near the oxygen system, you have to make sure that no smoking is done. No petroleum products should be nearby. Especially we use sometimes greases and all, those greases should be avoided. Now I will discuss about some emergency oxygen system. Okay. This you can see here that how this uh, human here and these are the your yellow color, your uh, mask and this mask has to be worn by the passengers or the air crews. In case of a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask above your seat will deploy. Please place the mask first and then assist your child or other passengers. So in case of your aircraft, if you see that the 
pressure is lowering down so it is automatically designed in such a way that as and when the pressure is reaching to a threshold limit your mask will fall down in, in front of you and you can put your mask first you should put then you help to others your child your wife or anyone is there first you should put immediately and then you ask and guide the other people to do and wear the oxygen mask so the mask so what is the mask and how these things are used that we have to understand very well so passengers masks are automatically deployed as the system is triggered detecting an excessive climb behind 14000 feet in certain altitude so if your aircraft is going above 14000 feet and all of a sudden your aircraft is climbing a long altitude like 14000 feet at a time so you will feel that there is a lack of oxygen or the lack of pressurization inside the cabin that time your mask will fall down and that time you have to use the mask as given the direction emergency descent procedure is initiated by the pilot so in that situation emergency descent procedure has to be followed this you can see here there is a one regulator here and this will fall down like this one two three and this you can wear like this and here we have near the mouth this is the near the nose this is the mouth and and this these are the strap this strap you have to put in your ear like this and this mouth should be near the mouth and this nose it should be near the nose so accordingly you have to use it and emergency descent procedure has to be declared and the, if it is going falling down or it is going up all of a sudden the pressure of the cabin will be reduced that time you need such type of emergency operation and these masks are very useful in those type of situation and this this you can this you can see here these are the here uh, lighting and other things and below this it will fall down and for every passenger you will get one mask and th this mask has to be function and people have to use this mask for the safety where does it come from now where from where you are going to get this oxygen the oxygen flowing out is a result of a chemical reaction so from where we are getting due to the chemical reaction the cylindrical emergency oxygen generator this you can see here this is the the cylindrical emergency oxygen generator is filled with sodium chlorate iron powder which when ignited undergoes unstoppable thermal reaction to release a breathable oxygen so in this cylinder this you can see here sodium chlorate is here and some iron powders are uh, filled and when these things are ignited a spark is uh, given here it will burn by burning this a continuous oxygen source will be released passenger has to pull the mask to release pin from the striker assembly which is in turn hits percussion cap sparking and the lighting the mixture and it starts the reaction similar to cigarette lighter so here it is a candle this candle is like your cigarette so take a match box and burn it same way here this is a candle and this you have to punch it here you will get the spark this spark will start burning by this burning of this spark here the chemical reaction will take place this chemical reaction and open this wall your oxygen will come out this oxygen you can this can be fed in the mask and this will be reaching to the required person as and when required some obvious questions are here does each passenger have his own generator no 
This is not for each passenger, but a group of people. No, one generator supplies oxygen for one entire seat row. So for in, in a seat row, we may have three or six or five. So for each generator, for each row, you will have one generator, which is here. This you can see here. This generator will supply for one row, maybe three or maybe four or maybe six as per the size of the aircraft. This generators are providing. Can the flow be regulated? No, the flow is fairly constant and the continuous. You cannot do anything, just you breathe it, that's all. How long does the oxygen flow? About 15 minutes the oxygen will flow, equivalent to time required for descending to 14,000 feet. And this much time is sufficient for descending this many feet as it is mentioned here. Because below 14,000 feet if you reach, oxygen is not required. That time it is sufficient atmospheric oxygen is available. That much you can very well withstand. What if mask does not come out? If it is not coming out, then what do you have to do? Give the panel a bang with the hand and it should come down. In worst situation, the crew will have to open it with a pin. So most of the time, it will come. If it is not going, you just bang it like this. If then also it is not coming, then you remove the pin. That time it will come. Sometimes it may happen. So you have to open. And in, especially if you are flying in aircraft, this procedure, you, you should be very much aware. What to do if in, you are in laboratory and you got this problem. There is a minimum of two oxygen masks in each laboratory. You have to use in laboratory also, you have to use the mask. Why is there a burning smell in the cabin? The generator becomes very hot and the plastic casing dissipates burning smells. However, it's fireproof, thus no need to worry. So sometimes you will get some burning smell. So you should not bury because inside it is burning only. The chemical is burning. So, and there is a plastic coating that plastic will also burn. So you will feel that something is burning, but in fact, it is not burning anything. What about cockpit and the cabin crew? The master warning is triggered and the pilot dons their mask with supply for several hours. Cabin crew uses same supply as passengers. However, have an option to use precise bottle which can be carried around. So pilots are normally they are using the same as the, all the passengers, but they have a separate systems also. But as and when this main system not working, they can use their own system. And I have shown you just now in the previous diagram that pilot and co-pilot and the observer will have their own points and they are they have a separate system also as and when other systems are not working these people can get the breathing how many masks are there on board legal requirement is minimum 10 percent more mask than the passenger so whatever the capacity of the aircraft your all passengers your flight crews your pilots and other things 10 percent should be more that is the requirement of any airworthiness or any uh, country's regulatory authority has to ensure that 10% more masks are there in the aircraft. Now I will go for the next topic about the de-icing and the anti-icing system of the aircraft. And we can see that what is the meaning of de-icing and what is the meaning of anti-icing. So anti-icing means the prevention of ice buildup. Anti-icing means prevention of means ice should not build up. If aircraft is parked outside due to the cold, air, the ice should not stuck on the wings or the fuselage or on the engines or any other places. So that is the prevention. De-icing is a cure. So it is already formed and you are removing by some method. It is called the de-icing. So the removal of ice buildup is called the de-icing. Generally speaking, anti-ice devices will be found on engine while De-icing is found on the flight surfaces. Pilot head keeps ice from forming or in an indirect sense removes ice from the pitot tube. Pitot head, not pilot, pitot tube. So normally the 
Anti-icing devices will be in engine. In engine, we should make sure that it should not form at all. And de-icing is found on the wings, surfaces, fuselages, and all outer part that de-icing systems are used. Anti-icing equipment is designed to prevent the formation of ice, while de-icing equipment is designed to remove ice once it has formed. This system protect the leading edge of wing and tail surfaces, pitot and static port openings, fuel tank vents, stall warning devices, wind seals and propeller blades. We can see here the thermal pneumatic anti-icing of the wing. So thermal and the pneumatic means it is hot air. By the hot air how we can make this system work. This you can see here that anti-icing. So here de-icing air duct is here. This is the colored each outer skin. So here the leading edge, here inner skin. This you can see that at this leading edge, the air will start from here. It is called de-icing. It will enter the hot air which is taken from the engine bleed or anything and this will heat it and it will go and it will exhaust from the some holes are provided. It will go outside. So in this way, this is called the de-icing of the leading edge of the aircraft. If you see here, these are the engines. From engines, the bleed air, the hot air is taken. This hot air will go to the shutoff wall. From here, if you see here, here thrust lever 60% here. Here we have the uh, load, load bus here and from here it will go to this. From here it will go to 140 degree Fahrenheit operation switches. And this will go to the all leading edges here, 350 degree Fahrenheit over temperature uh, switches are here. If it is more than that, it will give the signal and it is a 212 degree Fahrenheit over temperature. Normally closed NC 41 PSI regulator shut off wall. So here we have the normally closed NC 41 PSI regulator shut off wall. Then we have 3.5 PSI switch. 212 degree Fahrenheit over temperature uh, switches, overboard uh, outlet, thrust levers, 60% uh, switches. These things are there. So he, this is called the thermo pneumatic anti-icing system and this is taken from the thermo pneumatic. It means the air, the hot air is from the engine and hot air. So it is called thermo and this is called the pneumatic. So this is taken and different temperatures are here, different sensors are here at 350 the high temperature sensor and these are the medium temperature sensors are here. These are sensing and accordingly this flow is entering here as it is shown and in this way we can make sure that pneumatic systems are working properly. Thermal electric NTIC. Next is that we are using electric. In previous case, we were giving the heat by the help of the uh, air, hot air. Now it is heated by the electric system. It is anti-icing system. So this you can see that right angle of attack indicator is here. These are the electrically operated. Right pitot tube here, right ice detector here. Center pitot probe. These are attached here. P2, T2 probe is here. This you can see here. And here is the right side and here opposite is the left side. So here left angle of attack sensor, PAT temperature probe, atmospheric temperature, left ice detector and the left pitot probe. So these are all electrically operated. Okay, so these are the systems which are operated by the electrical operation and this heating is heating is done. Now next is the chemical anti-icing system. In that we use some chemical. I think you know that 
whenever we use the this uh, bring some items or some machinery you will get some packet inside so those are the uh, chemicals which are used for the absorption of the moisture inside so chemical anti icing is used in some aircraft to anti ice the leading edge of the wing stabilizer wind shield and the propellers the wing and the stabilizer systems are often called the weeping wing system so wing and the stabilizer systems are called often a weeping wing system oh, so what is the weeping means already ice is formed and it is slowly slowly it is melting the ice is melting some water will come so it is like a weeping the wings are weeping so these are used for the wings stabilizers wind shields and the propellers and this you can see here that uh, propellers uh, slinger ring in the spinner porous panel on the wing here you have the proportional units this all things are shown here in this way it is done so these are the differences which i have quoted here Moira and the Seabridge Aircraft Systems, Mechanical, Electrical and Avionic System, Professional Engineering Publishing Limited, London and Bury St. Edmund. Moira and the Seabridge Design and Development of Aircraft Systems and Introduction. And next is the slide share from Suresh Chaturvedi Aircraft Oxygen System. This I have taken from online. So, any questions you are welcome to ask. I will feel very nice and very happy to answer your questions. Hope you will like my this video and please like it, share it. And also, you if you are not subscribed, please subscribe. It. Thank you very much for the joining. We will see you again for my the next lecture very soon. Thank you very much. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.